Yes. Good morning, Jaime. Let me add it. All right, the potential water me bolach, boker oro me bolach. So we are continuing our uh, the mood of the kiin balacha. Today we're at day number twenty. I'm very happy to say that uh, I've been coming uh, into contact with many of the members, and they're telling me how they're being more uh, aware of the hundred berachot. Especially yesterday was Shabbat. People were telling me how careful they are. And they're trying to count to make sure. Somebody told me that he used all the berachot of the Torah. Uh, Torah. He needed it and he used it. And so Baruch Hashem, the people are not only learning, but they are retaining and they're putting it into practice. I'm proud to tell you that over 500 of our members took the test, which is incredible. And uh, Baruch Hashem, the average is uh, over 80. I think we even got uh, most of the most of the members even uh, in the nineties. So, Baruch Hashem, uh, the program is uh, is working. So today we have some questions regarding Shabbat. How to gain extra berachot? So again, on Shabbat we said we're short at least twenty berachot. So one idea that the Poski debate is to do the following is to have the Sauda of Shabbat and make Birkat Amazon, and then after Birkat Amazon, to bring out the fruit, and then to make the Berachot on the fruit, and then to make Beracha Harona. Now, what are you going to gain by doing that? Even if they bring the fruit before Birkat Amazon, you still have to make a Beracha on the fruit because it's not part of the Sauda. However, you're not going to be able to make a Beracha Harona because the Birkat Amazon is going to cover it. So in order to grab an extra beracha harona, for example, put in a fashot, or to get a ala etz, if you're having one of the, the species of Eretz Yisrael, so the post-scheme debate, are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to put yourself in the position to make berachot that you could have avoided? That would be the subject of beracha she'ena tzedicha, which means we love the fact that people are making berachot, but you can't just you know make berachot randomly just to get to 100. Uh, there has to be justified. And the question is, is that considered justifiable? Interestingly enough, there was a great rabbi that the Gemara talks about in Menachot. His name was Rav Hiya, And Rav Hiya, the son of Rav uh, Abiyya, actually used to eat perot, it says, on Shabbatot. That doesn't tell us when he ate the perot, but he ate the perot on Shabbat in order to get extra berachot. Came a great rabbi called Shlach Kadosh. Who was the Shlach Kadosh? The Shlach Kadosh was a great rabbi called the Levi Shaya Halevi Ish Hurvitz. He was a great, great rabbi born in Prague in the 1600s, 1500s, and eventually he makes his way to Eris Yisrael. He actually makes his way to Tiberius. He's actually buried in Tiberius next to Harambam. And he writes on the way to Tiberius, actually it says he stopped in Syria in 1622. He stopped in the city of Aleppo, the Shlach Kadosh, and he went to a great rabbi called of Shmuel Vital, and he studied Kabbalah with him over there, the Zephyr Etz Haim, in Halab itself. And then he came to Eretz Yisrael. The book that he wrote is called Shla. Shla is Shene. Luhot Abiri. This book has everything in it. I recommend it. It has Musa, it has Parashat uh, Shavua, it has Kabbalah, it has all beautiful ethical ideas. Two volumes. Shnei Luhot Abiri. That's what he named the book, the two tablets. One time, the Benish High tells a story of a, a man that came into the court, and the, the rabbi saw that he was uh, not telling the truth, but he has to get him to admit. So he says, are you telling the emet? And I'm telling the truth. He says, are you willing to make a shibu'ah? I'm willing. So the rabbi says, okay, bring the shnei luchot 
Let him make a swear on the Shnil Chod Nabiz. What Shnil Chod Nabiz? He said, he told he meant really the tablets. He says, no, 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 I, I'm, 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 uh, I can't swear on Shnil Chod He says, but can I see them? He brings out the book of the Shla. He says, what is this about? The Shla, that's what I'm going to do. I have the tablets of Moshe Rabbeinu. Shnil Chod Nabiz is the book of the Shla. So he got him, he tricked him. That's the way you have to deal with a trickster. You have to trick the trickster. Anyway, the Shnei Luchot Berit writes that a big hadush that it's not considered a beracha she'enat sedicha by doing that on Shabbat by delaying the dessert till after Berakat the Bazum because it's sedicha. You need a hundred berachot. You're doing it for a purpose. Since you need a hundred berachot on Shabbat, you're allowed to put yourself in that situation in order to delay the dessert. And that's actually the way Hakam of Ajah Alam Shalom he concurs, and he actually says it's the opinion of the Ilya Raba and also Hakam Yitzhak Tayyib in the Sefer Aruch HaShulham. And that would be the consensus. However, I should point out, if a person's going to do that on Shabbat, it's better to delay to bring the dessert out on the table till after Birkat Amazon. If the Birkat Amazon is being said the dessert is there already, Right, that's already, you know, it's in front of you. So therefore, you should tell the, the people that bring out the dessert, wait, after we cut the Amazon, bring it out, and therefore, according to these opinions, you would have no problem. Now, the issue, and by the way, the Moroccans, they were in a Moroccan so we have to tell the customs of the Moroccans over here. <laughs> the Moroccans, they come along and have a minhag, that they make a barakat, the fish, after, after kiddush. Mm-hmm. So they get extra barakat. They make kiddush. If they even though they're going to make hamotzi, but they eat some extra items before, and again, they clearly have what to rely on. That is their minhag. The question that we have today is, can you do this during the week? This is till now we're talking about on Shabbat. Yeah. But let's say during the week, a person has a se'udah, and he wants to do the same thing. He wants to be cut the mazon, then bring the fruit out, so you get extra berachot. Hakam of Adya'ala says, then it's not necessary. Because during the week, you have abilities. You have so many opportunities, we said, to make me so you So it's not really considered a tzorik. It's not considered a necessity to do such a thing. So therefore, it would only be when it comes to uh, Shabbatot. Fine. Now we get into a major question that a lot of our members have been asking. And we told them, be patient. We're going to come to it today. The question is going to be like this. We said till now that the way you count the Me'ab Berachot is from sunset to sunset. I mean, sunset starts the new day, and all Berachot that are made after sunset are going to go on the following day until the following sunset. That's the way it is. It starts from the night before, because in Judaism, it starts from the night before. The question over here we're going to have is, let's say, we'll start in the case that happened yesterday. Guy has Su'udah Shilishit on Shabbat, and sometimes it's Su'udah Shilishit, it goes till after sunset. Sometimes he makes berachot. Let's say he washed and he made hamotzi nechmanah before sunset, of course. And then the seudah goes into what's a Shabbat, goes into sunset. And what happens? What's that pinot? He makes what a pinot? What a pinot? He's allowed to eat. He's doing seudah shlishit. The question is, but it's after sunset. But it's still Shabbat. So here's the question that you're going to have: What do you do in the case where? You're after sunset, but it's still going to be Shabbat. Which day do you count the Berachot? That's going to be the, the She'elah. Now, the She'elah will be uh, as well uh, the other way. You have a lot of times people pray Arbit on Friday early. Mm-hmm. They, that's in the summer. They pray Arbit already from Plaga Minha which is way before sunset, maybe an hour before sunset. They pray Minha, they pray Arbit. So now they want to know these berachot, where do they count? It's still, it's still sunny. He goes home, he's eating the Shabbat dinner, makes kiddush. But it's light outside. It's light outside, but it's Shabbat. So the question really is, how do you judge these cases where it's not a, uh, uh, technically, and technically it should be a new day. For example, sunset came, but you're still holding on to the Shabbat, or reverse it's the same day, but you made it a different day by accepting Shabbat upon you. So how would you negotiate uh, these days over? These are very, very major questions. So Hakam of Yah'alam Shalom, he brings the opinion of the Taz. Taz is Tudism. Now listen, listen to what cases that these rabbis think. They don't see this case explicitly, but they extrapolate it from a different case. 
What's the case they have? You have a case of Shemini Atzeret. Okay, you know Shemini Atzeret. Mm -hmm. That's the last day of uh, of the holiday of Sukkot. It transitions to a new holiday called Shemini Atzeret. Now we know you don't sit in the Sukkah on Shemini Atzeret. Let's say you're in Eretz Israel, we don't sit in the Sukkah on Shemini Atzeret. That's clear. It's, it's, it's not Sukkot. Beautiful. Now let's say you have a guy, he accepted Shemini Atzeret early. That first minyan, uh, the night of Shemini Atzeret, he went, it's the light outside, they've made Tosefet, they prayed early. Does he have to sit in the Sukkah? What's the debate? On one hand, you prayed Arbit, Shemini Atzeret, but it's before sunset, so it's really still Sukkot. So the Torah Zahab writes very clearly, once the guy prayed Arbit, and he accepted upon himself Shemini Atzeret, he does not have to sit in the Sukkah, that's it. Which means the Kabbalah of Shemini Atzeret, even though it's early, transitions it to a new day. And therefore, you're exempt from sitting in the Sukkah. Well, according to that uh, opinion then, so we can negotiate that what? That similarly, that if a person is accepting Shabbat, like the case we said on Friday afternoon, he's accepting Shabbat early, even though it's still before sunset. Since already he brought the Shabbat upon him, and we know that accepting Tosefet Shabbat is, uh, according to some opinions, that's from the Torah, you have to accept Tosefet Shabbat. So the acceptance of Shabbat is able to transition himself or uh, uh, from the day to the to the new day. And therefore your Berachot will be able to move to Shabbat. That's when you need them, by the way. <laughs> On Shabbat, we need every Berachot we can get. So that's a great question. So the answer to the first question, somebody that accepts Shabbat early on a Friday night, is berachot, at least according to the Taz, and that's the agrees, can be used for the following day, meaning for Shabbat. Yeah. And similarly, if the person's Sa'udah Shalishit goes late, mm. it's Shabbat, he says. So according to the Shabbat, bottom line, it's still Shabbat. And therefore, you can count those berachot for Shabbat, unless you prayed Arbit in between. Mm. Now, I don't know who would do that. In the middle of Sa'udah Shalishit, let's say, they decided uh, to pray Arbit before the Katamazon. So then already, once you pray Arbit, then already you, you, you cut it off. But that's a that's a rare case. So again, I'm reviewing now the uh, the cases over here. I'm re reviewing the cases over here. Uh, two cases we have. We have the first case where he accepted the Shabbat early. Then we're going to say that once you accept the Shabbat early, it's Shabbat. And your Berachot are considered Shabbat Berachot. And similarly, if you extended the Shabbat late, especially according to the Ben Ari, the Ben Ari brings down that um, the aura of the Shabbat actually extends an hour after sunset. And there's a Kiddush of Shabbat, Tosefet Shabbat. So therefore, as long as you're extending the Shabbat in that time, you have no problem. As long as you didn't pray Arbit, you can count. And that's the opinion of the Taz. That's the opinion of as well. It should be pointed out, just to know the other side of the coin here, there was a great rabbi called Rav Shlomo Zaman Oyerbach. Rav Shlomo Zaman Oyerbach had a very simple uh, 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 rule. Sunrise, sunset, sunset. I don't care if you sprayed Arbit, if you accepted Shabbat, you look at the clock. If it's sunset, it's the next day. I don't care if you kept Shabbat and you accepted Shabbat early. Sunset, sunset. That's Rav Shlomo Zaman. He doesn't make any... Uh, any peshanot over, any, any any compromises. But again, we don't follow that. We follow hakam of Ya'ala v'shalom, and that's what we're going to have. Now, before we conclude this over here, we get to the more appropriate question. Leave Shabbat. What about every day? What about every day of the week? It happens a lot of times that during the week, especially in the summer months, we pray out of meet early. Now, we pray out of early. So let's say sunset is at 8.30. Well, let's go East Coast. It's, it's at 8.30 p.m. We could pray Minha already and I'll be at 7.30, 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. praying early. So now you pray prayed Arbit, and now you're praying Amida. And then you're going home and have dinner. And you're making all these barakot. So the question is, when do we uh, uh, count those barakot for? Is it considered... Day because you still have an hour and a half before sunset. Oh, but maybe since you prayed on the beat. Now you could make a difference between the last case we said. The last case we said Shabbat. You accepted already Shabbat. 
So by accepting Shabbat, it's a new day. It's not, it's not Friday anymore, Shabbat. And you can't call it Sunday because I'm extending my Shabbat. So the Shabbat is its own uh, day. I understand that. But the question is, does Arbi change the day? That's the Shein Arbi. Does Arbi change the day? And this question we've been receiving uh, off the hook, by the way. Uh, people want to know uh, exactly because they're keeping their Berachot counters. They need to know exactly how to count them up. Reset. So therefore, they got to reset the buttons. They got to reset the count. So on this subject over here, we introduced our members a famous mahloket between two giants. One rabbi called Terumat Adeshin, and one rabbi called Maharil. Okay, let's go to the discussion. The discussion over here is a lady, before she could start counting her seven clean days, which is their past for her to go to the mikveh, she has to make what's called hepsek tahara. What does it mean, hepsek tahara? She has to, before sunset, make a inspection in order to establish that she has stopped bleeding. Right? It's called hepsek tahara. And the hepsek tahara is done during the day. Now you have a lady, Isha Tzadika, and she prays Arbit. Baruch Hashem, there's ladies like that. She prays Arbit early. She prays Arbit early. She went to the Minyan. She went to the Minyan. She prayed Arbit with everybody. Azago Baruch. Now what happens? She wants to make Hefsek Tahara. So comes the Turuma Tadeshin and says, too late. You prayed Arbit. You made it a new day. Once you made it a new day, sorry, no Hefsek Tahara. Husband's not going to be too happy about that. <laughs> Better off that she doesn't proud of me to make sure buy it, but she can, that there's always next month. But the rabbi called Maharil, the Maharil said no. He said, I don't care if she paid Arbit. Bottom line, look outside. The sun is still outside. Arbit doesn't change the mitziut of the of the of the day. If a person needed to make the barakah uh, 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 on, 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 on the sun, technically, the sun is still out. <laughs> Therefore, he comes along and says, You have uh, 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 still time. To make. So according to this, this would seemingly be the source to answer our question. According to Turumat Tadeshin, Arvi transitions to the next day. According to the Maharil, it doesn't. Question is, who do we follow? Comes Hakam Madya Ala Mashalom in his sefer Kotarat Abayir, and he's posek like the Maharil, which means to say that even though you're prayer Arbit, it's still the same day. It goes according to sunset. Well, so according to that, it sounds like, sounds clear, that if you make berachot, you're still considered during that day. So if you prayed, let's, for example, arbit early on a Tuesday, doesn't matter. You can still count your berachot for Tuesday. That's the way Hakam Yes seemingly holds. But we have a problem. This is not such an easy question. Shohan Aruch has another similar she'ela by a person that prayed Arbit, and now he wants to put on tefillin. Whatever it is, he forgot to put on the tefillin that day, we didn't have access to tefillin, or his stomach maybe wasn't uh, clean to put on the tefillin, whatever reason we're going to give. Now he prayed Arbit. He says, Baruch Hashem, I'm feeling much better. I got my tefillin. I want to put on my tefillin. Shohan Aruch says, you cannot put on tefillin after Arbit, which sounds like that the Shohan Ruk is following the opinion of Turumat Adeshin. And Chamu interestingly enough, and here's where it gets complicated, argues on the Shohan Aruch and says if a guy prayed Arbit, technically he can put on the uh, Tefillin, mm -hmm. which is a Hidush. Because I guess Tefillin is the Oraita, and Hakam wants to give a guy uh, you know, uh, a chance and he can rely on the other opinions. But that's not the opinion of Maran. Maran of Yosef Karo sounds like he holds that once you pray on beat, you made it night. So now what are we going to do? We have one rabbi that's called Turumat Adeshin, which is seemingly the opinion of Maran that mm -hmm. says once you pray on beat, it's over. You have a rabbi called Maharil, which sounds like Hamvadya took the Maharil that says, no, it's still day, it's still day. Gentlemen and ladies, the answer to this question remains sephic.
We can't, we can't answer it because from Shulchan Aruch, it sounds like it's a new day. From Trumat Adesh, from Mahriel, and from Akhav of Adyah, it sounds like, no, you can use it as the same day. But we can't go against Maran. Akhav of Adyah said it. So therefore, a guy that's doing this, uh, will, it definitely you can count the Berachot. The question is, where you're counting it. <laughs> Which means, if a person, let's say, every day prays early. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for sure, you're going to get your berachot to one of the two days. Whether it's uh, the day or the night, they'll count. But the, the problem is going to be, if let's say, one day he prays early and one day he prays late after it gets dark. So for sure, after he, if it gets dark, it's considered the next day. But uh, the first day where it's fake, we don't know if he can consider it the next day or the day before. So therefore, Basically, Rabbi Otay, uh, praying early is going to be a dilemma. Mm-hmm. So you be you better not factor it in for your hundred berachot. You know, you better uh, uh, and, and, and unless a guy prays it every single day like that, so then he'll always, no matter what, he'll always, he'll always be covered because you'll always have the same the same amount of berachot. The problem is going to be when he when he prays one day early and one day late. And then he's going to have an issue of which day can he count those benachot. So let's review it up more time quickly. Some of the hal- you see, every day we're learning halachot. This is the only way you, you'll know what to do if you spend 15 or 20 minutes a day thoroughly to analyze these questions. Now you know, if somebody comes and asks you a question in the street, Hakam, on Friday night, I was by a house and we made the cut the mazon and they brought out the fruit. And I was screaming at them, ah, tell me wrong, it's not he did right. He wants to make extra berachot. Whose opinion is that? Shlach Kadosh. Shlach Kadosh came along and said, you have no problem to do that. Ilya Rabbah, Erech HaShulchan, and Chavah Vayak encouraged. But not during the week. In the week, you shouldn't try to generate extra berachot that are not necessary. Second halacha, if it's still Shabbat, the berachot continue for the Shabbat. And if you accepted Shabbat early, you change the day by accepting Shabbat early. That was Acham Abayah's opinion based on a rabbi called the Taz, although Rav Shomo Zam and Oyebach argued on that. And finally, we had the uh, the question over here that uh, when it comes to the weekday, it comes to the weekday and you pray at meet early, this is a big mahalom between Turumat and Maharil. Although Acham Abayah looks like he's leaning with the Maharil to say, that it's still considered the same day. However, Maran, it sounds like, takes it through my tradition, doesn't let you put on Tifinin after you pray on beat. And therefore we say, So keep that in mind. When you're praying early, it's not going to be so, you better going to count. That's not a question. The question is, right. which day is it going to count? So therefore you have to be aware. Again, like I said, if you pray every night like that, you'll be okay because you're always going to get the Benachot either for one day well, the next doesn't matter, but the, the problem is going to be when you pray one day early and one day late. So therefore, you're not going to be able to maybe get those berachot on the day that you need it. All right, Abotai, send in your questions, by the way. If, if people have, we don't discuss everything in these uh, in these shi'urim, you know, just uh, to open up the ideas. But if people have questions, you're welcome to send it in. And God willing, we'll try to uh, answer. Baruch Amen. 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 Thank mm-hmm. you.